Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now... With over 200 episodes made, originally airing on NBC Radio Network from 1944 to 1950, we bring to you Boston Blackie. Let's grab this guy, Small, right now, if Waterman's on his trail. Oh, wait a minute, Logan. Uh, Smith, tell Waterman to hold the wire a minute. Right. Now, look, fellas. Waterman thinks he's found Jack Small. And that's great if he's found him. But we want to be sure. Do we know for sure that Small is in town? Well, I think if we piece all the evidence together, Inspector will be positive. All right, Logan, you've been trying to find him. What do you know? I spotted his car on the east side the day before yesterday. His car, huh? That doesn't mean he was driving it. No. Nope. I got a look inside it, and his famous lucky piece was hanging from the gear shift. Yeah? Small might park with his car, but never with that lucky piece of his. He's in town, all right. Mm. At least we know his car is, Logan. It means he is, too, Inspector. A man in working clothes driving a car that fits the description of Small's was in a minor accident yesterday. Yeah? But he drove away from the scene. And that checks with the dope we had on Small's pals. Uh, read me that report, Logan, huh? Okay. Two weeks ago, one of Small's former stooges bought several pairs of overalls, heavy gloves, and a workman's cap and lunchbox in a downtown store. Yeah, so what? Maybe he was buying them for himself. Oh, no, Inspector. The clothes are much too large. He hasn't been seen wearing them. This is getting interesting. What we found out about work clothes fits in with what Waterman knows about Small. Small joined a gang of workmen in the West Side Quarry. Uh, Smith, is Waterman still on the line? Yeah. Okay, I'm satisfied. We finally found this guy. I'll take that phone now, Smith. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, Waterman. Oh, good morning, Inspector. How are you? Yeah, uh, fine, Waterman. Where are you? In a candy store about a block away from the quarry. In a candy store? Where's Small? In the quarry working? Yeah. You don't want me to go after him with a shovel and a pickaxe, do you? Uh, no. I'm as close to him as I can get. And incidentally, he's working under the name of Bigelow. Bigelow, huh? Are you sure it's small? Well, I wouldn't be sitting here in this candy store if I weren't sure, Inspector. I think you can trust me. Mm, I know. Grab Bigelow and you'll have small. Well, we don't want to take him while he's in the quarry. Some of the other workmen might get hurt. You know where he lives? Yeah, I found that out before I found out where he works. He's living at 18 Western Avenue. 18 Western Avenue. With one of the workmen in the quarry. A chap named Carter. Fine, Waterman. Good work. Thanks. Follow small when he leaves work. Call in then, and the boys and I'll drop in and pick him up. And now meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie, enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. Blackie, if it's all right with you, I'd like to just sit around your apartment this evening. I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> you're just saying that because you don't want me to think you're a good time Charlotte, aren't you? Good time Charlotte. <laughs> oh, Blackie, you do more things with words than you do with locks and safes. Well, what about it? Am I cordially invited? Yes, you are. To pay a call on a friend of Shorty's. Oh, have you heard from Shorty? Mm-hmm. Telephone this afternoon. Wonderful friend, that guy. I know he is. What friend of his do we have to call on? It's a fellow named Jack Small. He's owed Shorty $500 for quite a while, and Shorty's just found out where he's living. And he wants you to collect it for him, huh? That's right. Small now goes under the name of Bill Bigelow, but the apartment is listed under the name of Small's roommate, Eddie Carter. Well, why does Small call himself Bigelow, Blackie? And whom is he hiding from? Faraday, I imagine. 
Small got lost right after the Wallace Johnson killing, and it strikes me that the good inspector would like to get his hands on him. I see. This ought to be interesting. You and I are becoming collection agents. <laughs> that we are. Tonight, we'll go to see Mr. Small. In fact, we'll pay him a visit and see that he pays Shorty the 500 Am I going to be able to sell you some candy today, or do you just want to use our phone again? The phone, Barbara. I have something on my mind, but it's not candy. Mm, you can hear the blasting in the quarry from here, can't you? Mm-hmm. Doesn't it bother you? Oh, it used to at first, but Mr. Talbert and I have been here six months now, and we don't pay any attention to it. <laughs> oh, have some peppermint? Uh, later, thank you, Barbara. Oh, but these are free. They're samples. A salesman left them this morning. <laughs> Oh, so that's the reason you keep the moose on the counter, huh? Uh-huh. Well, maybe I'll accept your offer on the way out. Please do, Mr. Waterman. They'll make you feel better, maybe. You look terribly upset. Yes, I am. And my boss, Inspector Faraday, will be, too. Well, I'd better get him on the phone now. Oh, I hope it isn't as serious as you think, Detective Waterman. I'm afraid it is. Excuse me, Barbara. Sure. Oh, uh, say, Barbara. Uh, yes? Did a man named Bill Bigelow, who lived here with a fellow named Carter, ever come in here? Sure, he didn't. Uh-huh. Well, I just wanted to check. Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday. This is Waterman. Waterman, what's up? You were supposed to wait till Bigelow got home and then call us. Don't tell me he got away from you. Sorry to disappoint you, Inspector. He didn't get away from me or a dynamite blast. Huh? He's lying at the bottom of the west side quarry with thousands of tons of rock on top of him. What? Is he dead? I imagine so. Don't you? Killed in the quarry, huh? How do you know it was small? Well, I was at the quarry when the report came in that a man named Bigelow was caught in the blast. Bigelow is the name Small was going under. So he was crushed to death, huh? Yeah. Well, he got just what he deserved. Yeah, they all get it sooner or later, Inspector. Any instructions? No, just come on back to headquarters, make out a report. It'll be weeks before we can dig Small's body out of that quarry, I guess. Yes, it will. But you can consider him officially dead, starting now. See you at headquarters. Bye. Well, thanks for the use of the phone, Barbara. Oh, you're welcome. Hmm, another blast at the quarry. You know, I still don't see how you stand it. Oh, I don't even hear it. But after what I did over here on the telephone just now, I guess I won't see you again, will I? Oh, you might, if those free peppermints of yours are good enough. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take a handful. But don't tell your boss I'm not a cash customer. <laughs> Her boss knows, young man. <laughs> but he doesn't mind. Oh, Mr. Talbert, this is Mr. Waterman. He's a detective. Oh, hello, Mr. Talbert. Hello, son. Hey, nice shop you have here. Hey, thank you. It's in good hands when Barbara's behind the counter. Eh, Barbara? <laughs> well, there hasn't been much to do so far today, Mr. Talbert. I, um, guess you didn't like the birthday present I bought you last month. Eh? I bought him a tie, Mr. Waterman, only he never wears it. <laughs> wear it? Of course I wear it. I'm wearing it now. Oh, look. Oh, of course, I didn't see it at first. People who have beards don't have to wear ties. Yes, right. <laughs> um, Mr. Waterman was looking for a man who called himself Bill Bigelow, Mr. Talbert, but he was killed in the quarry this morning. Killed in the quarry? Oh, that's too bad. Yes, it is too bad. He was killed right after a blast like that one, buried under rock. Well, glad to meet you, Mr. Talbert. Goodbye, Barbara. I'll take you up on that offer of free peppermints again sometime. All right. Goodbye. 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 
He's an awfully nice man, don't you think so, Mr. Talbert? Yes. Quite a nice young man. Too bad he wasn't able to catch the man he was looking for. I suppose he's very disappointed. Mm, I imagine so. Mm, free peppermint drops. <laughs> think I'll have some, too. Yes? We would like to see Bill Bigelow, please. And incidentally, I know he's really Jack Small. Oh. Well, what do you want to see him for? Never mind what for. Just tell him that Boston Blackie wants to see him. Uh, I, I don't really want to see him. I just came along as a bodyguard. Oh, come in. Come in, both of you. That's better. Mary? Thank you. I'm Carter, Jack's roommate, but I'm afraid you can't see Jack just now, Blackie. Why not? He's dead. Dead? Why does this always happen to us? This happened to him, lady. It was an accident. We were blasting at the quarry this morning. He was buried under the rocks. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, it's right, Blackie. There goes Shorty's $500. Uh, Jack owed a friend of yours $500? That's right. Well, uh, Jack and I were good friends, best. I'll pay his debts for him. Hmm? You'll pay the 500 Sure. Here, Blackie. Five C-notes. Satisfied? Well, uh, sure, uh... Sure, thanks a lot. Jack but, uh... wasn't a bad guy. He told me if anything ever happened to him, to square his debts for him. He even gave me money for it a couple of months ago. Guess he must have had a hunch. Yes, I guess he did. But I think it was the law he thought would fall on him, not a pile of rocks. Now, oh, come on, Mary. We got what we came for. I guess we did, Blackie. Well, goodbye, Mr. Carter. Thank you. It's all right. So long, both of you. Goodbye. Shorty ought to thank you, Blackie. Somehow I don't think Carter would have given up that money if you hadn't asked for it. I don't know about that, Mary. No, come on, let's go out to the car. Darling, you have that certain preoccupied look in your eye. I don't like it. What's wrong? Well, it seems strange to me that Carter would pay a dead man's debts just because he was his roommate. Well, Small gave him the money to do it. He said that. I wonder if it's true, though. And right now, I wonder if his death was accidental or... Or what, Blackie? It's just too much of a coincidence that Jack dies on the day that we come out to see him. And Carter gave up that money much too easily. Mary, there was something phony about that explosion. And I'm going to blast out the truth. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Inspector Faraday has definite evidence that Jack Small, alias Bill Bigelow, a murderer, is in town working in a stone quarry. But just as police close in on the gangster, he is reported buried under tons of falling rock blasted out of the side of the quarry. Blackie, unaware of Small's death, goes to see the gangster to collect a $500 debt, gets the money from Carter, Small's roommate, and learns of the gangster's death. We now return to our story to find Blackie in his apartment playing checkers with Mary Wesley. <laughs> now see what you can do with what's left on the checkerboard, Mary. Well, Blackie, I still have two kings and two men. I'll win yet. <laughs> sure. If we play long enough, you're bound to get lucky. Lucky nothing. I'm shrewd. <laughs> All right. There's my move. Uh-huh. Let's see. It's not bad. Here's mine. Oh, dear. Now what do I do? <laughs> you get shrewd. Now, you've got a couple of possible moves there. <laughs> I can't see one. Oh, keep looking. You'll find one, but I warn you, I may be on the phone only an hour or two, so you'll have to hurry. That's me. Hello. Hello, Blackie. Oh, hello, Inspector. I'm glad you called back. Look, I want to talk to you about Jack Small. Oh, you do, do you? There's my move, Blackie. Hold the wire, Faraday. What for? Never mind what for. Uh, Where'd you move, Mary? Oh, oh, never mind. I see it. You see it, but what can you do about it? Uh, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. I'll make this move. See what you can do about that. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, Faraday. What were yeah. you saying about Jack Small? I suppose you know all about it, huh? Yes, he was killed in a blast at the West Side Quarry this afternoon. Blackie, can I have one case to myself? You have to butt into everything. You mean to tell me you realize this is a case? Faraday, sometimes yeah, you Yeah, I by. have moved, Blackie. Blackie. Can you get out of that? Now, hold the wire, Faraday. Uh, what is this? Checkers, just a minute. Checkers? 
Now, look here, Blackie. Hold the wire, me. will you, Faraday? Uh, this is ridiculous. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, 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 Mary, are you going to be sorry? Why? <laughs> One, two. That's why. Ooh! Just one king and two men left. Never say die, Mary. Oh, golly. I've left my king in a very tough spot there, I think. You have? Mm-hmm. See if you can figure out why. Yeah, now, about that accident at the quarry this morning, Faraday. Uh... Accident? That wasn't any accident. No? What makes you think so? I'm smart, that's all. I think he was murdered. You do? By whom? By one of his gang. Murdered to keep him from talking when we grabbed him. Somebody must have known we were closing in on him. And killed him to shut him up, huh? Not bad thinking, Faraday. Not bad at all for you. What's wrong with it? Plenty. Wait a minute. What, hey, again? Mary. Oh, Blackie, I hate you. I know. Because I'm mean and you're only shrewd. <laughs> listen, Faraday. Listen to what? You playing checkers? No, listen to this. You think Small is dead, don't you? Yeah, I'm murdered. Well, I don't. I suppose you think it was all an accident, huh? Faraday, I think Jack Small, or Bill Bigelow, or whatever you want to call him, is still alive, which is more than I can say for you. But... Goodbye. My move, Mary? Mm-hmm. And I think I really have you this time. Oh, you do, huh? Well, just watch this. Ooh! You won again. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. Let's quit now, huh? I'm thinking. Oh, then we play one more game, because if you're thinking, I have a chance to win. By the way, what are you thinking about, that Jack Small fellow? Yes, Mary. I'm thinking that while we're playing checkers, Jack Small is playing dead. Let's go see his roommate, Carter. I think the next move is his. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Still blasting in the quarry, aren't they? Uh-huh. Even on my day off. Oh, do you work in the quarry? Five days a week, I do. Oh. Um, I'm looking for some homemade cookies. Homemade cookies? Yeah, I understand you carry them here. Yes, just a minute, please. I'll see if we have them. Sure, I'm in no hurry. No hurry at all. M- Mr. Talbert. Hmm? Yes, Barbara. Come in. Mr. Talbert, there's a man in the store asking for homemade cookies. Oh, there is? Yes, sir. You said to tell you if anyone ever came in and asked for them. Yes, my dear, I did. Thank you very much. Uh, show the man back here into my living room, will you, Barbara? Yes, show the man in at once. Seems to me, Blackie, that Mr. Carter isn't at home. Seems to me that my knuckles are getting sore from knocking, too. (laughs) Maybe we ought to just try the door, Mary. Oh, that's the hard way. (gasps) Blackie, look there on the floor. I'm looking. Is he dead? Very. That's Carter, all right. This is what I like. I come up to ask a question, and I find a corpse. We'd better get out of here before Inspector Faraday walks in. All he has to do is find you with a dead body. I'll leave when I'm through looking in Carter's pocket. Oh. Hmm. All empty. That's the thief. What are those, mothballs? No, oh, they seem to be those little peppermint drops. Well, all right, but come on. Let, let's get no, out of here. I... You were talking okay. about Faraday, Mary, party. and that's his voice. I might have known. Huh? Now, look, Waterman, if this fellow cut... Blackie, you. Hello, Faraday. And don't say I killed Carter. He was dead when I got here. Honestly, and Quiet, Miss Fursley. Blackie, I'll talk to you later. Well, Waterman, now they're both dead. And we're at a dead end, Inspector Faraday. Oh, Blackie, I don't think we've ever met. My name's Waterman. Yes, I've heard of you, uh, Miss Wesley, Detective Waterman. How do you do, Detective? Uh, how was he killed, Blackie? Stabbed. First Small was murdered, now Carter. Fine. Mm. That means I've got to get to work. Hey, these things are good. What things? These peppermints. Uh, have some, Inspector. No. Let, put those things away, will you? Hmm? You've been tossing them in your mouth all morning. Well, let's see one of those peppermints, Waterman. Why, that's funny. Wait a minute, Mary. May I have one, Waterman? Oh, sure, sure. Here, have a couple. Thanks. But tell me, where'd you get them? Where? <laughs> At a candy store right there. They're free. They keep them on the counter. Oh, I see. Well, let's go, Mary. Would it be all wrong for me to ask where to? Not at all. I'm going to find out how good my hunches are. I want to know what a mint meant in this murder. Here's the candy store we're looking for, Blackie. Oh! What do you suppose that noise was? Blasting in the quarry down the street, probably. Oh. Mary, Carter had peppermints in his pocket when we found him. And Waterman was eating peppermints. He said he got in the store. I see, and you think there's a connection, do you? 
Yes, and this store is the cannon. Oh, there goes another blast. Yes, my blast didn't have anything more to do with killing anybody than that one that was supposed to have killed Small. Like it, you mean you really think that Small is alive? I have a strong hunch he is, and... Oh, I just had an idea. And I just know I'm not going to like it. Look, here comes a delivery boy on a bicycle. Oh? What are you going to do, ask him for a ride? No, watch and see if the delivery is for the store here. Hey, he's stopping right at the door. Hey, boy! Boy! Yes, sir? Hey, come here a minute. Yes, sir. What do you want, sir? You delivering that package to this candy store here? Yeah, I'm from the drugstore. Well, what's it to you? Well, nothing much, only I'll deliver it for you. Oh, no, you don't, mister. I well, get... uh, uh... Five bucks? Hey, mister, take the package. <laughs> so long and thanks. Blackie, I don't like what you're up to, and I like it less because I don't understand it. Everything's going to be all right, Mary. Now, let's see what's in this package here. Oh, you can get into trouble doing this. I can make trouble for somebody, you mean. Ah, oh, I was afraid of this. What's in the package? Nothing at all that means anything. Toothpaste, shaving cream, soap, and mouthwash. I just wasted five dollars. Uh-huh, Smarty. All right, now what? Now, I'll deliver the package. Wait here, will you, Mary? Oh, dear, I know it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, beautiful. <laughs> hmm. Free peppermints. Oh, yes, help yourself. Uh, uh, something I can do for you? Well, yes, but first I can do something for you. Oh? A uh, delivery boy just asked me to bring this in. Oh, yes, Mr. Talbot ordered something from the drugstore. This must be it. Did you say Mr. Talbot? Yes, he owns this place. I see. Hmm. Mr. Talbot certainly has a fine stock of candy here. Oh, it's the best. Could I interest you in any? No, no, I don't think I care for anything right now. Not anything I see, that is. Oh, you're looking for something else? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Something special? Very special. Something like, well, homemade cookies? Uh... Uh, yes. Homemade cookies. Just a minute. I'll be right with you. Oh, I'll take that package with me if you don't mind. Of course. Here you are. Yes, Barbara? Uh, here's a package for you. There's a man outside looking for homemade cookies. Homemade cookies? Yes. Shall I show him in? Uh, just a minute, dear. Yes, sir. Yes. What are you looking for in that drawer, Mr. Talbert? Oh, nothing important, my dear. Just something I might need. Yes, show the man in, will you? Yes, right away. Would you come in here a minute, sir? Mr. Talbert would like to see you. Why, thank you. Uh, that'll be all, Barbara. <laughs> well, come right in, sir. Come right in. Thank you. I said that'll be all, Barbara. Yes, sir. You asked for some uh, homemade cookies, did you? Yes, in a way. A very fine beard you have, sir. Uh, who are you, Santa Claus or the man who came to dinner? What do you mean, sir? I mean, Mr. Talbot, this is a cute gag, but I also think the laugh is on you. You are Jack Small, aren't you? Why... And don't reach for your gun. No. Then I'll reach for you with this. I can reach, too. Oh. Oh. Uh, maybe I can't knock your beard off, Mr. Small, uh. but I can sure pull it off. No, no, don't. Too late, don't. Jack. It's off. Uh. Well, look at uh. here. It was a phony, wasn't it? And so are you, pal. All right, so what? So you know what, Mr. Small? Your beard wasn't real, but right now you're going to have to take something else on the chin that is... <laughs> sit down, Waterman, sit down. Relax. Glad to see you. Thanks, Mikey. Glad you dropped in. Say... Did Small tell you why he killed Carter? Oh, sure, sure. The same old story. You, uh, you know it, don't you? <laughs> I think so. Small killed Carter because Carter was the only one who knew that Small wasn't killed in the quarry and had adopted the identity of Talbot. I really suspected Carter knew something from the first. You did? How? Carter paid a debt to Small after telling us Small was dead. He paid you the money to keep you off this case, Blackie. I figured there was something screwy somewhere. I suppose you know who was killed in the quarry blast, don't you? Uh-huh. Nobody. That was the little plan worked out by Carter and Small. They planned it a long time, too, I understand. Six months ago, I'd say. Mm-hmm. About the time Small took on the part-time identity of Talbot, the candy store owner with a beard. Yeah, that's about it. 
But you know, Small still doesn't know how you knew that beard of his was false. <laughs> yeah, he says you seemed so sure of it the, the minute you came into the room. Oh, I was sure of it, Waterman. Hmm? Small had just received a package from the drugstore. There was shaving soap in the package. Oh. A man with a real beard doesn't use shaving soap, does he? No, but he has to keep himself clean-shaven so that the false beard will come off easier. Uh-huh. And you know, it's a funny thing. Yeah? What is it? If Small didn't have to be clean-shaven behind that beard of his, he could have made a clean getaway. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.